Welcome back, everybody. Hope you're doing really good. We are on our second part of our new devotional series called Get Up. It's January the 3rd. It's a Tuesday. And yesterday we said it's time to get up in faith in this new season. And secondly, reminding us of the way God spoke to Joshua. I want to say today, let's get up in strength. Joshua chapter 1, 6 to 7, and also verse 9 says, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, and do not be afraid. Now, the only reason why God would say to Joshua here three times, be strong and of good courage, is because he's not feeling strong and he's not feeling very courageous. In other words, he's feeling weak and he's feeling unable. Now, the reality is this, is God needed to instill in him the need to once again get up. We mentioned it yesterday. He's sitting down and God's saying, no, get up, get up and be strong. Why did he have to be strong? The reason he had to be strong is because of the enemies he faced. The Bible says he faced some great enemies. Joshua chapter 3, verse 10, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, Amorites, and the Jebusites. And I think we experience the same sort of difficulties and challenges in life. The word Canaanite means this, zealous or passionate. And one of the things that I've found is this, is that every time I face an, an enemy, however you define that, that may be an idea, an ideal, a a kingdom way of thinking, uh, a mentality that is opposed to God, a spirit, maybe even a person. That enemy always comes across as zealous and passionate. I, I find that rarely are attacks against your person, against your, your, your God vision. Rarely are they passionless. Think about every time you've had difficulty with a person. I bet you they've been passionate in their attack of you. The second people group that Joshua faced as an enemy was the Hittites. And Hittite literally means this fear or fear invoking. Of course, we have the image, don't we, of, of Goliath, the great giant, who when he would come out in 1 Samuel 17, he would invoke and stir fear. But I want to say this to you for this year. Fear is merely a loss of perspective. That when you remind yourselves daily God is on the throne. God is a big God. No one can compare. None can, can, can come close. God can do the impossible. None can compete against God. And that God has already won. What that tends to do is it tends to put the things that we're fearful about into a little bit of perspective. And yet we all do face an enemy, the Hittite, or if you like, fear. Another enemy that Joshua faced was the Hivites and the Perizzites, and that means villager or belonging. In other words, tribal. And one of the things I've found is this, is that bullying mostly happens in groups. Do you remember in Luke chapter 22, verse 47, Judas couldn't take on Jesus alone, and so he got the Roman guard with him, or he got the, the guard with him, that they bullied up, ganged up against Jesus in the garden when they came to arrest him. Bullying, enemy activity usually happens in groups. It's mob rule. It's gang rule. It's cancel culture. It's what we see left, right, and center where the masses gang up against. And I find that often in life, we can feel quite isolated and quite alone when difficulty comes against us. And often that difficulty is tribal. It's a belonging. It's a crowd. It's a group. And it's a peer pressure that will try to make us to bend the knee, bow the knee to things that, that are not God honoring and not God glorifying. Another enemy that Joshua faces is the Girgashites. And Girgashites means clay dweller, soul with a soul focus on earthliness. And we're really talking now about, about living our lives based on what we can see and touch. And of course, we know, don't we, as spiritual people, that it's dangerous to simply live our lives on what we can see with a natural eye and touch with our hands. Jesus says in John chapter 8, 23 and 24, in the message translation, Jesus said, you're tied down to the mundane. I'm in touch with what is beyond your horizons. 
You live in terms of what you can see and touch. I'm living on other terms. So we've got to be careful that we don't allow the Gergeshite mentality, that which we see with our natural eye and feel with our physical touch to be the thing that defines and confines us. For we are meant to be spiritual beings. Another enemy Joshua faced is the Amorites. And that means here that, that the word Amorite means outspoken, outspoken really speaks of exaggeration with a little bit of truth mixed in with it. Outspoken. Uh, I love this passage in Acts chapter 19. It says this, soon the whole city was in an uproar, Ephesus, uh, that the people seized Gaius and Aristarchus, and they rushed into the theater. The assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people didn't even know why they were there. And isn't it amazing how everybody has an opinion these days? And we've got to be careful whose opinions we listen to. And let's remember that ultimately we live not for the audience of the many, but the audience of one. His name is Jesus Christ. And the last enemy that Joshua faced and had to overcome here is the Jebusites. And the Jebusites means this, trodden down. And sometimes, especially when we're going through a long winter, a long wilderness season, a long season of difficulty, we can feel trodden down. But I want to encourage you, don't allow circumstances to define you and, and to, to, to tread you down into the ground this year. Let's make a decision to get up. Let's get up in faith. Let's get up in strength and learn once again to take hold of what is naturally impossible, but supernaturally probable. May God bless you on this day. Have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Much love. God bless.